Hello, welcome back to Station Ears. I'm Mick and today we're going to be finishing off, well hopefully finishing off, our automatic furnace. Now we've done, on the last, the last video on part one, we said about automating temperatures and pressures in our storage tanks. Now this time we're hopefully going to use them to smelt some alloys. Well that's a plan anyway. I uh, don't really know how we're going to do that, but um, we're just going to have to mix gases, the hot and cold gases into here to make gas of a certain temperature and uh, hopefully be the right temperature. Well, not hopefully, we'll try and force it to be the right temperature. Uh, so, what do we have to do on this one? Well, we can get it to know what the maximum and minimum temperatures have to be for a particular alloy. Uh, so, I don't want it to have to vent what gases it's already got in there before it starts up. So, I'd like it to be able to calculate whether or not it can reuse the gases it's got and just add a bit more to make it to the right temperature and pressure. Uh, so, as we're not wasting the gases it's already got. And then we don't have to wait for it to vent everything and then refill it. So I have somehow got to get it to calculate if it can just add gas or if it has to vent before it can do that. We have to figure out how much gas it has to add and at what temperature it has to get, get it to work. And then we have to be able to add the right amount of gas at the right temperature. Uh, sounds simple enough. Yeah. Uh, well, um... So how, how are we going to do that? Um, I guess we start by seeing if we can actually produce gas at a specified temperature. Um, so I guess we'll have to know the temperature and pressure of the hot and cold gases. Then we'll have to figure out how much of each we have to add. And then we'll have to figure out what pump settings we need to add, set to make that work. So uh, we're going to have to control those two pumps. We'll need to know the tank pressures, although we have, we can get pressures and temperatures from the pipe. That'll be more accurate than getting it from the tank. So we should get them from there and there. So we'll need to control one, two, three, four items. And the furnace, five. That sounds doable. So I'd better start by naming things so I know what is what. Right, so you are my cold pump. And you are my hot pump. You are my hot analyzer. And my cold analyzer. Um, that should be all we need, if this works. Um, right, so we shall um, hot pump. Oh, I did it again. Cold pump. Uh, hot. Hot out analyzer. Cold. And the furnace. Furnace D4. Right. Now, we set them up. We have hot pump, cold pump, hot analyzer, cold analyzer. 
and advanced furnace and nothing good um, I might just put a safety on those pumps I'm going to switch them on and set them I might just put an override on them so I can shut them off if it doesn't work um, so I shall I shall put a batch writer on there. It's on a separate circuit to the other ones there, so I should be able to batch write to those valves. They're the only valves, uh, volume pumps I've got. Um, so I should be able to just batch write to them. A switch. Logic switch. Q down. And hook you up. Done. And a switch out will be a volume pump on. Switch them down to zero. Right. There I go with green. They're red. Good. They're working. Um, I suppose it'd be nice to know what setting they is on them as well too, without having to actually run around there and look all the time. Um, I shall put on a couple of consoles. And you and you. Boom, done. You're hooked up. Now I will have to somehow. Um, so you should be hot display. You should be the cold display. Now um, I've got one spare pin. So if I make you the hot display, display D5, and maybe just read the other one from the IC housing. So if I set any cold readings to that one, I'll just be able to read them using a reader and writer. So I shall need logic chip, logic writer, logic reader. Yeah, come on. Right. So now shoot in from the IC housing. The setting. Out to... What was it? Cold display. Setting. Right. So now I should have a way of reading both those pumps on there. Make her life a bit easier. So, um, okay, I'm just avoiding doing this because I don't know how. <laughs> 
but I guess we are going to have to have a loop. And a loop somewhere along the line. Um, now, I shall have to load the hot and cold temperatures and the hot and cold pressures. I'll have to set a temperature so a set point we shall produce gas at um, what we've got so say 800 Kelvin now okay so our set point the amount of gas we'll have to add will depend on the difference between our set point and our hot and cold tank temperatures. So the closer it is to the hot temperature, the more hot we're going to have to add. Okay, so... We're going to have to load into R0. my hot analyzer temperature right so the closer it is to the hot the less hot we're going to add so the difference okay right here we are so the difference between the hot pipe and the set point will be the amount of cold gas we've got to add. So we shall uh, subtract. We're loading the hot one. So R0 shall equal the hot temperature minus the set point. So that's the percentage of, or the proportion of that we'll have to add. So to get a pump speed now, the volume pump is affected by pressure and temperature. So we just want to calculate a number of moles to put in. So we shall need to load to R1. It'll be the cold pipe, the pressure, and we shall divide what we've got there, R0, uh, R0, R1. I'll tell you what, this is going to get... I'm going to use these a few times, so I might just alias some, some variables on this one. Alias uh, hot setting. Uh, five. Cold setting. R6. Right, good on that. So we're calculating, so hold on, load the temperature. So this is our cold setting we are working out. So our cold setting setting and I can now reuse R0 so I'm not screwing up too many variables now. So now it is also affected by temperature so if we load into R0 cold analyzer temperature so now I so colder temperature will produce more moles so I'll need a lower pump setting, so we've got to multiply it. 
multiply a cold setting as a cold setting times R0. So that should give us the speed for the cold pump. So we wanted that onto the DB housing. So save DB setting a cold setting. Um, export um, OK Yep, no worries um, So I'll repeat the same for the hot then I guess Now we have it there, we load temperature from the cold analyzer Subtract from the hot setting is now at a set point minus a cold temperature. Whereas the hot temperature minus the set point, you get a positive result. Set point minus that to get a positive result again. And then we, from the hot analyzer, we get the pressure, the temperature, divide by the pressure, multiply by the temperature, and we get our setting. Save that to the display. Export. We're good. Wow, shit. 2000? Seriously? Um, I might have messed that up. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> Display hot setting. There's some settings we can use. Now, if I write them to the pumps, so save to the cold setting, to the cold pump thing, cold setting and to the uh, save to the hot pump setting Hot setting. We're happy. Seventy sixty six, right. Now our set point was eight hundred degrees. Whoa, four megapascals, holy crap. Oh, um, right. I'd better seal that up. All right, it's all emptied out. Let's give it another go. The numbers have changed here because the temperatures or pressures may have changed there, but we'll see how we go. Uh, I'm, well, that goes up quickly. 808. Those numbers are changing as the pressure and temperature change. Eight hundred and eight is not bad. It's not exact. I wonder if that's just an error because things are changing so quickly. I might turn turn them down and see if we have a better chance. So if we divide it by ten. So we'll slow down the pumps a bit. There we go. Now they're operating a lot slower. All emptied out again. Switch you on. 803, 804. Now it's close. Is that just dumb luck? And I've got it completely wrong and it just happens to be coming out at the point or was that actually attempting to? So let's say something a bit closer to one end of the spectrum. Uh, if we say 1500. Now let's put in a lot more hot this time, which makes sense. So I'll wait for that to empty out and see if we get 1500 from it. Right, so uh, emptied out. 
Now we're aiming for 1500. And we're pretty close to 1500. We're slightly high once again. Is that just a rounding error? Uh, well, it should be near enough for what we want to do. It doesn't have to be exact. We've got a fair old temperature range that we can work to. Um, so, I'll say we are producing gas at a specified temperature. Right, so now, can I hit a pressure? Um, right, so I'm going to have to, if I want to hit a pressure, I'm going to have to control these with a certain throttle. So if I specify a pressure, um, let's get rid of you. Um, call it input temperature into R7 input pressure into R8 and I shall move input temp we'll put thousand degrees into there and move input pressure to bar megapascal as well. So I'm going to have to put a multiplier onto them to switch them off. Now I found in the past there if you just run it up to it at full speed you'll overshoot your pressure. We want to hit it pretty close so we shall once again calculate our distance from the pressure setting and just slow the pump down as it approaches that. So I shall need probably an input speed Speed uh, 9. I hope I'm going to have enough aliases or enough registers to do all this. So we'll need to calculate an input speed which we'll multiply to these. To work them out. We're going to have to control these two settings here and make sure they don't get out of control because if they're both very high, chances are two pumps pumping in at maximum speed will outrun the one pump pumping out at maximum speed. So we might blow something up. So we want to make sure that those settings don't exceed 50. So if we add them together, they shouldn't exceed 100. So we'll have to apply some sort of a scalar on them to get that to 100 and then some sort of a scalar on top of that to slow it down as it approaches the set pressure. Alright, so first up let's get the pressure. So we load into our zero furnace pressure. Right, so we're approaching the pressure from below. So the input target pressure. So our set point there. So we'll need the current pressure for the set point minus the current pressure. So our sub R zero input pressure minus R0 because we'll be coming up from a lower pressure. 
If it's a negative value, it means we need to vent pressure. But let's not worry about that yet. Um, so that'll show, tell us how close we are to it. So we divide that by a, a response. Um, so we shall write R0, R0, say 50. And we shall max that out between 1 and 0. Or max, sorry, max it out between 100 and 0. So uh, if we just put minimum R0, R0, 100, so it won't go above 100. We can accept a negative value because that'll tell us something in the end. So now I shall need to add those two settings. So Before we can divide by the input speed, which we don't know yet, maybe I'm just going to move them down the bottom. Right, so we shall say that is our input speed there, because we're going to override R0 again. Now, we know our hot and cold settings. So we need to scale them. So if we So R zero equals hot setting plus cold setting. That's a Mac. That's the two of matter together. So if we divide both of them by that, they're a value between zero and one. As a percentage, right? So they'll both add up to one. Okay, so if we now say Ah, oh, come on. So if you divided by R0 and once again cold setting by R0 now those two will add up to 1 so if we now multiply them both by the input speed now we should be good right as I vent that, they should go up, which they are. Switch it on. We're going for one megapascal at 1000 degrees. And that's pretty good. 1 megapascal at 1.01 thousand K. Okay, that is looking pretty good. I can put in a specified pressure at a specified temperature. So, now I just need to figure out what that temperature and pressure have to be because we're not going to vent it. We are going to keep whatever gases are in there and just add more. So if I've suddenly got one megapascal in there at 1000 Kelvin and I want to get it to 10 megapascals at 
1500 Kelvin, what temperature gas does it have to add? Um, you can just vent it all out, then just start afresh adding 1500 Kelvin, but I don't want to do that. Um, so how am I going to do that is the question. Well, with our good old PV equals NRT, the volume and the gas constant will always be the same in the furnace. So by knowing the current pressure by the temperature and the current moles, we can figure out how many moles will be in the same furnace at the, new, at the desired temperature and pressure. So then we can figure out how many moles we have to add. And if the moles times the temperature is the energy of it, we can figure out how, many, how much energy is in the current furnace and how much is in the outcome, that we desired outcome. Then we can figure out the energy difference and the number of moles different so then if I divide the energy by the, the the energy we have to add by the moles we have to add, that should give us the temperature of the gas we have to add. Or something like that. That sounds easy. Holy crap. Um, so if we're going to do that, we're going to have to have a target temperature and pressure. Um, so now we're going to have a minimum and maximum. So we'll set them up. Um, well, we'll have an ingot hash. So we know when to eject it. We know when we've made it. So there'll be an uh, ingot hash, which is a R10. Now we'll want another minimum and maximum temperature. In temp uh, 11, max temp uh, 12, and the minimum maximum pressures. In pressure uh, 13, and max Fresh R14. Okay, so I'll have to set them, won't I? So if, it, if, if it's adding gas to make the temperature and temperature, it will add gas to resolve it to the lowest energy result, which will be the minimum temperature and pressure. So we just need to know those two. So uh, move min temp to 1000. Uh, min press, uh, say 1500. Oops. Now, we have to calculate them, so I don't need to set them now. Um, well, actually, our input pressure, our input pressure will now be min pressure. That was the only place I had it. We're good. Right, so it will try and resolve it to the minimum pressure. That's that one solved. So now I need to calculate what that's going to be. Um, let's just rename perhaps. We'll make a new start. We shall call that bit um, 
Add pressure. That's a new function. Uh, pretend to yield, jump to the start. So, that'll just hive this code off into a separate part of the program. So, where it'll, we still want it. We just don't want it right now. I'm trying to do something else. So, from this one. I want to know the current moles. So we shall load into R0 the furnace total moles. Why didn't that work? Capital M. There we go. Load into R1. Furnace pressure load into R2 furnace temperature. T M P E R A T U. Oh, ah, there we go. Right. Total moles. We shall divide by the current pressure multiply by the desired pressure. Okay, so we shall say R0 R0 divided by the pressure Then we multiply it by the desired pressure in pressure. Now the temperature is the opposite, so we've got to multiply it by the current temperature. R0, R0, R2, and divide by the desired temperature. Uh, R0, R0, and minimum temp. Right, so that should give us the total number of moles we'll have in the final, the final, final gas mix. Well, the final gas mix at that, at that temperature and pressure. If it's a negative number, won't be a negative number. Right, so now we need to subtract what we've currently got. And I've just overwritten the total number of moles, haven't I? Well done. <laughs> um, right, so now I need to subtract that. Right, that's all right, so let's, so that's the total number of moles. Do I have any registers left? Ah, three and four. Okay, running out. Um, moles, ah, uh, three. Temperature are uh, four. Uh, right, so that's our set point. That's not what we want here at all. To input t oh, no, input temp, that's what we want. I have set temp, input temperature and pressure. Or input temperature. Alright, come on. Get back on the target. Uh, Right, so moles, let's take you, 
Put you in there. Right. So I calculated the moles in the final in the final mix. So now if I multiply that by the temperature, which I've just divided by the temperature. Uh, okay. So that's the energy. That is the total moles. That will be the total energy. Move moles into move into temperature moles. Right. So total energy is now in temperature. So now I can mess up this one. So total moles. So now if we uh, subtract moles moles from R0. So that's the total moles in the final mix minus what we've already got will be what we have to add. Right. Whoops. Try that one. So now the same with the energy. Uh, multiply R zero. We call R zero times temperature R two, and that is the current energy so now if we uh, subtract uh, temperature will equal the total energy which is this one here stored in temperature minus the current energy, which is stored in R0, that will give us the added energy. So now if I divide the energy by the total number of moles we're adding, we should get the temperature. So we divide the energy uh, yeah, temperature. Uh, this is actually the input temperature we're trying to calculate here. Input temp is equal to the total energy divided by the moles. Okay, now save that to hot display setting input temp now have I got complete garbage from that oh, I haven't got an error a thousand oh yes because we've got a thousand degrees we'll need to add a thousand right aha good plan so if I remove that and drop that temperature, that is not changing. Why is that not changing? Yep, there it is. Try that one. Try again. Now we're moving. Right, so now it's got to do 2000 degrees. And it's rising. So now if I reduce the pressure in there, that should go down. 
because it's adding more gas so it'll need to put it in at a lower temperature to get to the 1500 or 1000 until it gets down to a vacuum at which point it should say a thousand degrees which it looks like it will all right so now that we have calculated our input temperature that's all I needed wasn't it input temperature so now I should just be able to jump jump to add pressure and add pressure will go through its thing and jump to the start again that's right so export we'll be fighting for control over the that thing but uh, we should be good so it's saying we need that combination. We're looking for a thousand degrees at one and a half megapascals. We have a thousand degrees and one and a half megapascals. Ha <laughs> sweet. Don't tell me this is actually going to work. So, um, right, so now um, we have to know when it can't do it. Uh, so we have that. So let's take you out of there for a minute. put you up there and it is telling us zero which is right because it's on target now um, so if we set it to a lower pressure I was still telling us a thousand degrees Let's give us negative pump settings. So if I now pump it out, once it gets to a thousand degrees, they should go positive. They do. I can switch it back on, should go to a thousand degrees. A thousand or megapascal at a thousand degrees. Which it is. That's good. And if I say go to a temperature it won't be able to do because that'll be colder than the cold tank. We get a negative number there. So even if I pump that all out, that should stay a negative number. Right. So if either of those two are negative, it's got a vent. So, um, so I'll create a routine to vent the pressure. So we know down here what those they're going to be. Before we actually set them and switch them on, I can jump out of there and say vent. So I'll switch off the pumps. Right, uh, so we shall put in there, uh, set less than zero, uh, 
uh, zero. So we set R zero if cold setting is less than zero, and set less than zero. Try again to R one if hot setting setting is less than zero. Now we have an OR, R0, R0, R1. So if either of them are less than zero, we need to guess branch not equal to zero, uh, R0. So if either of them are less than zero, a negative, which will branch to vent, vent furnace, which we haven't defined yet. I'll call you down here, vent furnace. Uh, is there we save cold pump setting try again setting zero save hot pump setting zero save furnace Output setting is it not output setting? Vance furnace you have setting output. <laughs> okay. Setting output at about no fifty. We shall yield for a tick and then just set it back to zero and jump back to the Back to the start. Right. So it'll vent back to the start. So that'll all happen before it gets to switch those pumps on. Okay. So confirm. We have negative values. So it is now venting. Oh, we also set that at an impossible value, didn't we? <laughs> okay. So now, all bets are off. We want 700 degrees, 1 megapascal. Switch on. We have 702 degrees near enough. And it's not getting me the pressure. What are you doing? Now, as you vent the furnace, those numbers should become positive. So that is really, really hot. Very good. And it stops venting the furnace now, so it should be ready to refill it. And we get two. 
1000 kilopascals at 700 degrees. Which is what we're looking for. So if I say 600 at 2000, confirm export. It goes to 2600. Right, so if I want to keep 2000 and so go to 1200 degrees it should have to vent some which it is doing until that number becomes positive as it has now it should inflate again so it didn't suck it all down to zero and it has got to 1200. <gasps> Sweet! It's working! Holy shit! Okay, so. So. Um. Right, let's give it something to uh, crap itself about. Um. So now I want um, ingots. Uh, is that a difficult one? No. Stalite, that's a difficult one. There we go. That's 10 to 20. Well, that'll do. Uh, so we should put 1800 at 10 megapascals. Confirm. Export. Temperature low. That is 1800 at 10 megapascals. Wow, that was too easy. Um, so what do you want? Silver, silver silicon. Cobalt. Silver. Two silicon. And a cobalt. Right. has to vent a bit. Wow, it's really taken a lot of the gas out of it. How is that still full? Right, so there's two megapascals left. Set it to a thousand and one. <laughs> All right, let's set it to because it's just it's, it's got to get over it. Ah, oh, I better put an outlet shoot on that, I guess. Whoops. Okay, so that seems to be the temperature regulation working okay. So now it's just a matter of putting the uh, ejector and the feeder and the selector on there. I shall program the stack. So here I have a heap of push commands which are going to push a heap of information into the stack for the chip. What I have here is a two-dimensional array, has nine elements in each record. 
This is a series of records. Each group of nine is a record. What it is, is an alloy hash code, which is this one for steel. Your minimum and maximum temperatures, your minimum and maximum pressures, and three, four hash codes for the ingredients. So for steel, it is between 900 and 100,000 degrees, between one megapascal and 50 megapascals, which is the maximum for the furnace. And we have iron, 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 and coal as the ingredients. And then we next nine records are another one, which is invar. Now, zero is just going to be a general purpose. We'll use that as a, a manual mode for just smelting all the regular regular alloys. So from there we just export that into our chip and it's in there. Now I'll pop it back in the other one because that's where my code is. I'll need to run that code once to program the stack. Now I shall export this code back into it again. Now that code's back in there. Now we shall want to do something a little different. So we don't want our display anymore. So for that one, I shall need to read the dial. Is that all I wanted? Oh, I'll need a button as well. Um, okay, I might batch the dial. Um, so I shall need a button and my dial. I shall need a button. Um, so I might batch the dial, read the button. Okay, so I won't be able to have these anymore, so they'll be completely useless. Um, you like can be gone. And you two will disappear. So on here, so the display shall become the button. Let's not use capital letters, that'll just confuse everyone. And we shall define the dial as Dial U. Come on. That's your dial. Right. How am I going for code? Oh, I've still got plenty left. Right, so I don't want them anymore. I'm going to have to tidy up this code pretty severely. Right. Now. They're all our devices. They are registers. So first thing we're going to need is to read the dial. So load into R0. Now we'll have to load batch because it's a batch into R0 the dial um, setting uh, come on setting and average well I got one of them doesn't really matter what setting we use there so that'll tell us what we're going to do so now it is a Nine dimensional, uh, nine elements per record. So we shall mult multiply R0 by nine. So that'll take us to the whatever record we want. So now I shall want to read the pressures and got hash. So we'll want to move to uh, the fifth item, which is five and pop all those values out. Uh, so, add to item 5 of that array, well, item 5 of that record, and we shall pop 
Up. Next press. Up and press. Up. Um. Top. Uh, what do we want? Max temp. Up min temp and pop in got hash. Boom. Okay, so we've loaded in all the relevant information for it. So we've looked at them. Now we can sort of say Now we can load from the furnace uh, in CA load into R0 from the park furnace you see a recipe hash and set equal set R0 if the recipe is equal to ingot hash so if it's made the ingot we're looking for, we're good. Uh, save to furnace open uh, zero. So we're good. So now I had better save to DB setting uh in got hash no gotcha right export that that's not working I'm overwriting it Oh, wait a minute. I've got an error. Get rid of you. Export. Still switch it on. Still got an error. Oh, idiot. <laughs> Stack pointer. Stupid. Right. Export. Right. It wants to make steel. So it is setting itself to the 900 degrees. And the one back. Oh, I should have changed all of them, shouldn't I? Right, um, ha, ha, ha. okay, so now we want to change these back to the uh, slightly above values. So 1001 and 1 and 1, etc. Go back into there, run that, now export that and run that it now should get there 901 degrees and you so if I get some not steel iron 2, 3 and a coal. Oops, and I'd better put my outlet on there this time, hadn't I? Not that it really made a difference. Um, grab some shoots. And an outlet, there we go. Now if I put 
Like iron in there, it should make iron, but not eject it. Oops, good shot, custard. Yeet all that in there. As it melts it all down, of course the temperature's dropping. As it does, it should be readjusting itself, it's venting itself. It's still venting. So it has to vent enough so whatever it uses is left there. Well, it's not going to keep much. Well, it's not that bad. Okay, it didn't keep much at all. But there we go. It's decided it's vented enough. It's resolved itself to the lowest possible energy of the situation. And there's me steel. Nice. And that's all still full. Uh, awesome. Now, um, I guess it's just a matter of now. Can I join it up to those ones? So that should be just a straight connect up. And, and I can get it to request some ingots as soon as I press a button. Okay, so we do that. Ingot hash. We shall put in here a load into R0 button. Setting branch not equal to zero. So if the button has been pressed, uh, uh, send yeah, send material. Right. So we shall go down here and make one called send material. And spell it right perhaps. And we shall want to yield and jump back to the start once we've done this. So now Can we do that? Yep, you're happy. The button. Button onto D5. I haven't done that, have I? Uh, D5. Button. There we go. Now if I export that, it shouldn't give me an error. It won't do anything, but it shouldn't give me an error. So now I want to cable it up to those things over there. And probably want to put some shoots in to connect to them. But uh, one thing at a time. So, uh, cables. Now, we want to send our ingots. Now once again we shall want to load into uh, no I want to load batch into R0 dial setting. And no, let's not make that mistake again. Into SP multiply SP SP by nine. We want to go to the last record, or the last item in the record. So uh, add SP equals SP plus 
Now, we shall pop into R0. This will be one of the ingredients. So now we shall want to batch right to a vending machine. A vending machine. Um, which is there you are okay something's going very slow and <laughs> I might have to restart the game I think um, I want a come on a vending machine is you so now uh, right so we want to save batch to a vending machine uh, it is try again it is request hash request hash r0 sleep one and do it again hey And we want to do that four times because we have four ingredients. Probably don't need that yield there anymore if we're sleeping. Alright, so that's two. Copy and friend and copy. Right. So when we press the dial, it should request the four ingredients for our alloy. Why did you flash? 96. Load batch. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Average. My bad. You're happy now? We're happy now. You're still chuffing along happily. Excellent. Now if I push the button. Coal. Iron. Iron. And iron. Excellent. So now if I hook that up to the inlet. It should be all rock and roll from there. Right, so there it is. It's hooked up to the inlet. So, it's ready to go. If I push the button. We have our ingredients zipping past. Into the furnace. Well, they all melt. We still have plenty of gas left. Oh, it's still melting, is it? Okay. It's venting. Powering back up again. And we're done. One last thing we want to do. So this is just where it goes to vent the furnace. So 
what we want to say now is if it's already in the sweep zone for the furnace for the alloy don't do anything so I shall load load into R0 furnace pressure so be careful of that because I'll probably just wipe off the bottom of my code if I'm not careful so R uh, oh, the pressure Uh, so set greater than R1 if R0 is greater than min min pressure now oh, come on in press all right so set less than uh, r2 if r0 is less than max pressure and R1, R1, R2 right, so that's keeping a score of how we're going so we'll load into R0 furnace temperature, temperature so we shall now set set greater than set greater than um, set R2 if R0 is greater than min temperature and we shall and R1 R1 R2 and I shall set less than Uh, set R2 if R0 is less than max temp and 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 R1 R1 R2 so now now we're going for lines uh, we've still got some left we're good so if it's between the maximum minimum pressure and between the minimum and maximum temperature um, just go back to the start that'll be it right so we should be good I actually might put my yield at the start instead of at the end that way it's always going back to the start so I can now move you oh I removed a whole one of them oh awesome <laughs> ah, that was helpful all uh, right Confirm. oh dear export Let's choose something else. Increase. Invar. Oh. <laughs> so, um, branch not equal to zero. So, if I one. Yes, so if branch, so it will be 1 if it meets all those, go back to the start. Otherwise, it will be 0. Right, let's try that one. 
Confirm. Export. Right. There we go. And give me the ingredients. Melty, melty, melty. And gimme. Anytime soon. There we go. Oh yeah, baby. There's a stellite. And gimme. Ha ha. Asteroid. Wow. Have I ever made that before? Well, let's find out what it is. Nickel, cobalt. Silver, by the looks. Come on. Gimme, gimme, gimme. We got it. Ha ha. Oh yeah. Okay, another hit for wasp ploy. Can we get it this time? As long as this temperature stays below 430 by the looks of it, we should be good. Oh, almost there. Almost. Why'd you back off? No, what are you doing? There it is. There it is. Something not quite right with that one, but um, yep, we're good. Ah, uh, so that is it. That is the new furnace. Uh, it needs a um, serious feng shui, but um, that's it. Click what you want, and it'll do it for you. Easy as that. Um, well. It still needs some work. It still needs some uh, checks and balances to make sure the tanks are at the right temperature before it tries to do something that it just can't do. Uh, but apart from that, it sort of seems to be working all right. Um, anyway, so that's what I've been working on for the past little while. Many late nights in this one, so uh, I hope you've got something out of it. So, till next time, happy building. See ya.